Ozempic, Wagovi, Zepbound, GLP-1 medication. If you're over 50, it's almost impossible to go to a party, a work event, or even a neighborhood get together without seeing someone who looks noticeably different, lighter, thinner, maybe even healthier. I've seen it firsthand in patients in the ER. You've probably seen it with friends, family, coworkers, and possibly even yourself. Even doctors reducing or stopping medications for type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, and other so-called chronic conditions because their patients have finally lost weight. And all from a weekly injection that targets a hormone system called GLP-1. But as an ER doctor, I also see the other side of the story as well. And there's a very real group of people who started GLP-1. They were motivated, excited, hopeful, but ultimately they quit. Not because they didn't want to change, not because they were weak or lazy, but because they simply couldn't tolerate the side effects. I'm talking about nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, dehydration, dizziness, pain, bloating, and misery bad enough to prompt a trip to the ER. I see this play out on a regular basis, sometimes weekly, definitely monthly. So in this video, I want to hit on a couple of things at once. I want to talk about why some people, especially over the age of 50, may need a gentler, slower start and approach to these medications. And I also want to layer in something that a lot of people don't know. These medications don't actually exactly the same in men and women. The differences aren't black and white, but they're there and they matter. Caveat, I'm an ER doctor. I'm not telling you to start, stop, or change any medication. This is just information and education so that you can have a smarter conversation with your own doctor. If you don't already know, GLP-1 is a hormone that your body already makes that regulates blood glucose, appetite, and digestion. The drug versions of GLP-1s are like an amplified version of that signal. They help your pancreas release insulin in a smarter way, they slow food exit from your stomach, and maybe most importantly, they talk to your brain. They hit brain areas that control hunger, cravings, food reward. They help that internal, I need something sweet dialogue that we often have difficulty controlling. So these drugs aren't just stomach shots, they're gut brain linked hormone shots, and they are very powerful. A recent review in the Journal of Endocrinology asked a very specific question. GLP-1 and its analogs. Does sex matter? I'll put the link down in the show notes so you can check it out yourself. But in other words, they were asking, do men and women respond differently to these medications? Here's the short version of what they found. Men lose weight. Women lose weight. Men eat less, women eat less. Both sexes see better blood sugar, better metabolic markers. But when you look closely at the data, especially in the big weight loss trials, women tend to lose more weight on the same dose than do men. In some big semaglutide trials, average weight loss for women was in the mid-teens as a percentage of their overall body weight, while men were closer to single digits. Now, that doesn't mean every woman is going to do better than every man, but on average, women seem to get a little more weight loss out of the same dose. Why? Well, one of the big players seems to be estrogen. In animal studies, when researchers give GLP-1 together with estrogen, the combination works better than GLP-1 alone. More weight loss, less food craving, better blood sugar control. When they remove estrogen in the female animal models, the response to GLP-1 gets weaker. Add estrogen back in, the response tends to improve. Younger premenopausal women also seem to release more natural GLP-1 one from their gut after eating than men do. So their system may already be more attuned to this hormone. It's not that these drugs are women's drugs or men's drugs. They both work. They work in both sexes, but the hormonal backdrop is different. Now, here's where it gets important if you're over 50. As we age, everything changes. Hormones shift, muscle mass declines, digestive motility slows down. Our kidneys and our liver don't always metabolize drugs the way they used to when we were young. For women, menopause changes the estrogen picture. Before menopause, estrogen may enhance the benefits of GLP-1s. After menopause, the age-related advantage seems to fade. So a 35-year-old woman and a 65-year-old woman may not respond exactly the same. For men, testosterone and body composition shift with age as well. Visceral fat goes up. Insulin resistance creeps in. The way these drugs affect the brain, the gut, and the pancreas can look a little different at 55 than it does 
does at 25. Now let's talk about side effects because this is what often sends people to the ER. Most people starting a GLP-1 will have some degree of nausea, bloating, maybe looser stools or even constipation, and the feeling that food is just sitting there in the stomach. For a lot of people, it's annoying and manageable, but for some, it's absolute misery. I see patients who have had one or two doses of GLP-1 and they come in dehydrated from vomiting or diarrhea. They're dizzy because they're still taking their blood pressure medications on top of that. Their abdomen is distended and painful enough that we're doing lab work, giving IV fluids, ordering CAT scans, and sometimes even admitting these patients to the hospital. These aren't small side effects and they can be really problematic. And when researchers look at the trial data, something else interesting shows up. Women are more likely than men to stop GLP-1 medications because of the side effects. Women report more GI side effects, especially nausea. In at least one large study, more women reported symptomatic low blood sugar than men. And it's not just because women are smaller. With liraglutide, for example, when they adjusted for body weight, women still had higher drug exposure in the blood at the same dose as men. Women also tend to have slower gastric emptying in general and hormone shifts that affect the gut and the brain. So now you have this picture. Women, especially younger women, often get more weight loss benefits from these medications, but they're also more likely to suffer from the gut side effects. Men may not lose quite as much weight at the same dose, but they might tolerate the drug a little better. Now, layer age on top of that, if you're in your 50s, 60s, 70s, everything about how you handle medications can become more sensitive. Muscle loss accelerates, your gut moves more slowly, you may be on blood pressure medications, blood thinners, diabetes medications, antidepressants, and sometimes all of the above. So if we use the same standard starting doses in a 57-year-old woman with high blood pressure, mild kidney disease, and a history of anxiety as we do in a healthy 30-year-old male in a clinical trial, we shouldn't be surprised when the side effect profiles don't look exactly the same. And this is where the idea of microdosing or ultra gradual dosing has started to come up in clinical circles. The FDA approved dosing schedules for these medications are based on large clinical trials and they're in place for a reason. They're designed to balance safety and effectiveness for the average person in those trials. But we all know that there is no average person sitting in front of us in the office in real life. Some people do great on the standard schedule, others get run over by a train. In some practices, doctors are experimenting, beginning with doses much lower than usual, sometimes breaking up the doses, sometimes spacing them differently. In doing so, this is always off-label, under close medical supervision though. You'll hear this referred to as microdosing. The idea is not to throw out the guidelines, but to give certain patients, especially those who are older, more sensitive, or who have already had a rough first first go of it, a gentler push up the ramp rather than pushing them off a cliff. GLP-1s suppress appetite, they slow gastric emptying, they improve insulin sensitivity, they reduce fat storage. Those are all great things, but all of that can happen fairly quickly. And some people, especially over the age of 50, especially on other medications or having a sensitive gut, too much too fast is where the trouble starts. Several studies, including this one in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism, have pointed out concerns around slowed gastric emptying as it relates to surgery, endoscopy, general anesthesia, and the potential for pulmonary aspiration or bowel obstruction. I'll put the link down below so you can check it out. So if your stomach empties slowly and you go in for emergency surgery, you may have more food or fluid in the stomach than anyone expects. That increases the risk of aspirating stomach contents into the lung. That's not theoretical. That's why anesthesiologists are very interested in how these drugs affect gastric emptying. And it's why they come by to talk to you before putting you to sleep for a procedure. Studies on GLP-1s are postulating benefits well beyond just weight loss and reversal of type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular benefits, kidney benefits, maybe even neurologic benefits in Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, even stroke. So even if only some of that turns out to be true, then it makes even more sense to help people tolerate these drugs more safely because the upside may extend way beyond the bathroom scale. So what might a cautious approach look like in real life, especially for someone over 50? I'll give you an example. One of my subscribers shared her story with me. She's in her early 60s. She lost over 40 pounds on a GLP-1, but here's what stands out about her journey. She and her doctor started low. They went slower than the average. She kept a log of what she ate 
weight, what she felt, any side effects. She avoided greasy, spicy foods, especially on shot days. And she didn't give herself a 30 day timeline. She gave herself a full year, a full year to lose weight, to adjust and stabilize. And she did it safely, steadily, consistently under her doctor's supervision. Not magic, but thoughtful, individualized care. Now let's bring the sex differences back into this. If you're a woman in your 50s or 60s, maybe perimenopausal or postmenopausal, you might not get the same estrogen benefit as a younger woman might. You may still get great weight loss, but the pattern might be different than a younger woman. The side effect profile might be more intense. Your cardiovascular benefits might be a little less clear based on the trials that we have so far. If you're a man in your 50s or 60s, you may need a slightly higher dose to get the same weight loss changes, but you might get slightly more consistent heart benefits. According to certain studies, none of this is to say these drugs are only for this sex or that, but it does appear to indicate that gender and age matter, hormones matter, your entire health history matters. So if you've tried a GLP-1 before and it went badly, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're not a candidate, but it does mean that your doctor needs to know the full story of what happened. How many doses did you take? Which GLP-1 drug was it? What were the other medications you were taking? What exactly did you feel? Were you mostly nauseated, constipated, lightheaded, all of the above? Those details can help your doctor consider whether a slower, gentler approach or even a different GLP-1 medication altogether might be worth discussing. And here's one more layer we have to talk about about, especially for women, mood, anxiety, eating behavior. GLP-1 receptors are in the brain areas that control mood and stress. Some studies suggest GLP-1 drugs might help mood in certain people. Others suggest they're linked to more depression and suicidal thoughts, especially over longer periods. Big database studies have found that both men and women on GLP-1 medications may have higher rates of being diagnosed with depression, but women seem to have a bigger jump in risk. Same pattern with suicidal thoughts. There are also signals that people on these medications may be more likely to show eating disorder behaviors, binging, purging, fear of eating. Again, women more affected than men. So if you're a woman over the age of 50 with a history of depression, anxiety, or eating disorder, you and your doctor should be extra intentional here. That might mean starting lower, going slower, checking in more often, looping in your therapist or psychiatrist if you happen to have one, and being willing to say, this isn't for me, even if everyone else around you is thrilled with the results that they're getting on a GLP-1. So again, set Sex matters, age matters, history matters. If you're over 50 thinking about starting or restarting a GLP-1, here's what I'd encourage you to do. Sit down with your doctor and have a very honest conversation. Talk about your age, your other medical conditions, your medications, your mental health history, any eating disorder history you may have had, and exactly what happened if you've tried one of these medications before and things went awry. Ask them, is there a way that we can start more slowly? Can we use use a lower dose and see how I tolerate it before we ramp up. Can I text you about my mood and any side effects that may pop up? Listen, a start low and slow mindset isn't weak. For a lot of people over 50, it might be the smart, cautious, prudent thing to do. GLP-1s are powerful tools. They influence your gut, your brain, your hormones, your heart, your metabolism. They're not magic and they aren't for everyone, but used wisely with a personalized plan, they may support not just weight loss, but healthy your aging, better metabolism, and possibly even brain health down the road. If you had a bad experience the first time, but you're still curious, talk to your doctor, share everything that happened, and ask if there's a more gradual way to try again. YouTube thinks that you should watch this video next. Thank you so much for watching. Please share this video with someone you feel would benefit from watching it as well. All the best to you, and I will see you in the next video.